yes it shall by the grace of god good morning to you and i trust that you are keeping just fine hallelujah we're sharing truth this morning on the women question and this is coming from first timothy chapter 2 verses 11 to the end you are warmly welcome to the really really knowing god channel i am Pastor Larry Adenekon. The channel is packed to inform and inspire you into real knowledge of the very real God that we serve, powered by the Pastor Larry Adenekon Center for Exploration, the place. This is Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you are done with spiritual chocolates and now you want a balanced diet, this is the place to be. We want to pray now. <clears throat> Father God, we bless you and give you glory. You have been a help to us, God, in this place. We know that. We appreciate that. We acknowledge it to God and say, take all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This morning again, we receive help from your presence for the sake of your people. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Verse 11, <clears throat> let a woman learn in silence without submission. I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. Adam was not deceived, but the woman, being deceived, fell into transgression. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with self-control. Right? Um, let's um, do a little bit of an overlap. Like we said, we may possibly do. It was talking about uh, something about what is proper for women who profess uh, godliness with good works. He said it is important for such people to be moderate in all that they do and to focus upon what is more important to God. The ornament of a, of a meek and quiet spirit. That's what the Bible calls it in, 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 the, in the book of Peter. That is a woman that has... Um, a beautiful and quiet insight that is one the, the one that God prefers um, to the external and the external things are for us are for us men for fellow human beings you know the internal things are the things that matter more in the presence of God amen then he went on now talking about women you, you can you can understand now how uh, we said let's reserve you know to we get to the next time for we call, we call, we call the women question okay so let a woman learn in silence with all submission I do not permit a woman to teach and to have authority of my man but to be in silence okay now this this thing has led to many many questions women should not talk in the church women should not lead in the church um, um, the other one is in, in the book of uh, Corinthians where it says even when a woman has a question she should keep it and then ask her husband when she got when she got home you remember all that as well so all those things have led to people asking question about the role of women in in churches okay now let us begin by saying this the Bible makes us to understand that the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Whatever way we interpret the scripture, it is important for us to find out what is the spirit behind this uh, scripture. That's when we can get it very, very well. Else, we're going to just look at it religiously. That's what is that, that's the way it is. That's what Paul wrote, you know, without understanding what is the spirit behind what Paul wrote. That's number one. Number two thing we need to do is to balance scripture with scripture. Scripture throws light upon scripture. It is important for us, therefore, when we pick a particular scripture to look at other scriptures as well and let scripture throw light one upon another. Okay, so that's it. And then again, <clears throat> uh, what's the other thing to talk about here now? Look about interpreting this thing. Finally, um, God has made available study Bibles these days that will enable us to go usually at the beginning of that particular chapter or book you know um, a, a little bit of an explanation into the background story will be given so that you can learn something from there or the other so let's just look at the things I said first of all how scripture throws light upon scripture let us use that one to, to find out what is the spirit behind this thing number one Remember how that the Bible says in the book of Galatians, so see chapter 3 now, um, towards the end of 3 or towards the end of 4, it says, Therefore in Christ there is no Jew, no Gentile, no born, no free, no man, no woman. In other words, in Christ, that, um, um, 
I don't want to use the word dichotomy. That uh, way of looking at things, women this way, men this way, and all. In Christ, all those things are done away with. He says, no Jew, no Gentile, no born, no free, no man, no woman. As far as God is concerned, we all are before him and we are all are his children the same way. It's not as if the, the, the male children are special or have a greater authority in the presence of God than his female children. In the presence of God, no man, no woman. That's what the Bible says. Again, we want to remember... <clears throat> Excuse me. How that uh, there are certain other forms of, I mean, acts of scripture that say some things to us. There was, a, there was a couple, Aquila and Priscilla. The Bible says that there was a church in their house. The two of them were pastoring together. Not only that, they put some, you know, they taught some people, educated some people, and and um, taught them in the way of the Lord together. That's what um, Paul says. Finally, there's another one where it says Philip had four daughters who prophesied. These people, where were they prophesying? They weren't prophesying in the kitchen. They weren't prophesying in their in their in their uh, uh, mother's chambers or father's bedroom. Else, nobody would know that they prophesied. They prophesied in the fellowship in the church there. Now, when we look at all the scriptures and then come back to this one, we find out that there must be a spirit behind why Paul was talking there must be a reason behind why Paul was talking it's not because a woman is a uh is of, is of um, it's a second class kind of person in the presence of God or in the scheme of God's things no 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 that's not the case Paul and co were addressing a peculiar problems at the beginning of the church when the church was just boarding if if these things were not done at that time it will truncate what God wanted to do now the culture they had at that time was that the woman was a second class citizen but when Christianity came women were liberated women were not able to talk and so that their that their tradition of saying after the day has started something <clears throat> they say if anybody has any word of exhortation, let him come now and share even women were able to take the scrolls you know that's the way the bible their bible was at that time and share from there now some of these women were taking advantage of that and were using that opportunity to throw guided missiles at you know people like their husbands or some other person that they have some beef with or the other they were using that opportunity and it was going to uh, lead to some of the husbands forbidding their women from attending the fellowship they used to call christianity the new way at that time that's what they call christianity this new way this new way you know so they were going to make husbands ban their wives from um identifying with this new way and so paul and the others they felt we should just put this in check now for the sake of the future of christianity and thank god they did <clears throat> because of what they did it was wisdom it is important for us to have spiritual wisdom and understanding in the things we do. It is because of that wisdom of that time we have what we have today by the grace of God. So it's not as if the woman oh, must not teach, must not have authority, but with silence, go and ask your husband at home and all that. Yes, it was needed to put in those instructions at that point in time to save uh, uh, Christianity and to bring us to where we are today by the grace of God. We are here and uh, all those things will not apply anymore. Uh, things are moved forward. Then he went on to say, Talk about Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived, and all those things. He had to look for some way to to back himself up. And you know what we learn from here is very simple, and that women, maybe because of the way they are wired, they are more likely to believe to believe uh, things faster than men. And so um, Satan also knew what what he was doing. He never bothered to go to Adam to try to convince Adam to do something. He went to Eve because there's a tendency for, for women to believe faster than uh, men will believe. And that's why you find that if you look at the story of most churches, the women often join the church before their husbands will join the church. That's most often, most of the time, because they have a tendency to believe faster than 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 those men. He says, uh, and then a very very big promise at the end of it the woman will be saved in childbearing where she's able to continue with faith love holiness self-control was what was being spoken about in verses 9 and 10 i spoke about moderation if you remember and if a woman is able to continue in all that um, all the power of god will come to her to her aid to support her to help her in all that she does during the time of childbearing i think it's the end of the particular chapter so we might have well just leave it there and round it off here today the lord bless you thank you very much for being there